She's not. Uh, he's not, he's oh. not on now. It's not official. Uh, introductions. We'll, we'll start with Layla. I'm Layla Mon. I'm the community development director of the city. Ethan McClung, assistant finance director. Bonnie Dennis, finance director. Steve Adams, city engineer. Ann Over, city manager. Mary Rowe, budget committee member. Wilda Park, city councilor. Kaylee Nance, a budget committee member. John Stahl, chairman, and Lisa Beatty. <laughs> Coming oh, in now late. entering. <laughs> You're right in time for your introduction. Okay. Yeah. Lisa Beatty, council member. Leslie Schockner, city budget committee member. Angel Falconer, city council. All right, first order of business approve the minutes from August 12th, 2019. Uh, I'd move to approve the minutes. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. City manager update. Uh, there have been a number of projects going on in Milwaukee over the last three months. And so just as a broad update, we have uh, the South Downtown Plaza and all of those roads that have been reconstructed as well as the axle tree opening on November 21st. Uh, and that's going to be from 5.30 until 7.30 p.m. Everyone's invited. We'd love to have a great showing. Uh, there will be food and fun and craziness. It'll be great. Uh, we also have the library opening officially set, so that'll be on January 11th, uh, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. on the 11th. Uh, we have Kronberg, which will be opening uh, sometime between December 15th and end of January. We're still trying to figure out when that pour will be done and, and ready to be open and available to the public. So keep an eye out for that grand opening as well. We have the Umbrella Parade on December 5th, and then we are Seven. 7th, thank you. <laughs> and we have uh, the Solstice event on the 21st, uh, and that'll be down at Milwaukee Bay Park. Uh, so this is a very busy time for staff right now. We are coming to the uh, close of construction season. The temperatures are getting cold. So we had a couple of pours that have been delayed for a few days simply because the temperatures have dropped too low. So we're waiting for the temperatures to come back up a little bit to do a last overlay, I believe, over on Washington Street. Street, that's currently set for Halloween day. Oh, I was going to ask that because I noticed on the on the electronic board, I, it was at 31. I'm like, it was 29. Okay. It's the temperature. So okay. we're watching the weather patterns to make sure that we can actually do the pour and have it set. The worst thing we could do is waste the money, have a pour go bad. And so right now we're just trying to make sure that they, that every, all of our dollars are spent well. Right. Um, we, I had uh, a request from the chair to also speak briefly about Monroe. So I am prepared to talk a little bit about the apartments. Uh, we have an application that has uh, come into the city. It is, came in on October 18th. Staff has 30 days to deem that application complete. We're trying to go faster than that. So we'll know hopefully here in the next week to two weeks whether or not the application is complete for the Monroe apartments. Uh, just so the general public knows, the application does have significant changes to the transportation impact study. It also has changes to the design of the path that they had originally proposed, and it also has changes to the entrance onto 37th. So all of those things will be made available as soon as staff deems it complete, and we'll be prepared for conversations at that time. Uh, in terms of the grant application for the Monroe Greenway, I'd like to actually turn it over to Steve and see if he wouldn't mind just talking very briefly about the grant application process and where we are on Monroe Greenway. Uh, yes, the, the grant application w came in from Metro, ranked a little bit lower than we had uh, desired to. Uh, so we worked with the Clackamas County C4 uh, subcommittee looking at the application. Uh, we got it reevaluated by the fellow cities up to number two on the list. It's out of the six county projects. And then at the C4 subcommittee list, uh, Westland graciously stepped down and allowed us to go number one. They were number one, but they also were number one the last cycle because we stepped down and let them take number one. And so they graciously stepped down. And so the subcommittee will go to the C4 uh, next uh, Thursday the 7th, 7th. where it w ho hopefully will stay the same being approved as number one and that gets sent to Metro. So hopefully everything lines up and we get the 3.8 million what we've requested. 
And that's the last in funding. So that'll allow us to build out the full greenway over the course of the next several years. Uh, but this is a big deal for the long-term plans of SAFE. For those who don't remember, we looked at fully funding several projects, but there were a small number of projects that we needed to grant fund a portion of it. This was one of those, so this is now uh, funded. And I believe that leaves us just with railroad as being another primary that we would need to fund at a future date. Um, but it's a big deal. It, it really is a wonderful opportunity and we really appreciate Westland stepping up and stepping back. That was pretty awesome. Yes, and uh, independently of that, we do plan to go out for design here in the next month or so and bring on a consultant and start design work in uh, January. Mm -hmm. Good. And there's also a grant for the 224 intersection. Is there is yes. that ODOT money been approved, or we're still waiting to hear on that? The there's two grants from ODOT. There's 2.5 million for the intersection improvements, another 3.1 million for the greenway improvements. Mm -hmm. Kelly indicates that there's that they're identified in the STIP funding, and so uh, they are approved and in the funding right now. Okay, so those are complete. Right. Um, comp plan, we've been working on diligently. We are a couple of months behind on the approval process. So originally we were going to try and bring this the first week in January. We're now looking at bringing this in March. We are not expecting that this is going to slow down the actual code rewrites, comp but it does mean that we are going to be submitting this to the state for review later than we had originally expected. Uh, we're just trying to make sure we get everything pinned down nicely into a singular document. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else from staff that we haven't talked about. I think those are the big pieces. Are there any questions from the group? Uh, I think that's an excellent update. It's it's amazing how many things are being completed. Fine, you know, Kronberg, the library, that kind of thing. It's um, exciting. Uh, I have a few, I mean, every single staff person here is really putting in a ton of time and a ton of our effort, and I deeply appreciate their work and service, but there is one individual that I'm gonna call out in this moment only because she had seven pours in one week, which was Jen Garbley. Uh, <laughs> in order to deliver this, she literally had to do multiple pours at the plaza. She had Kronberg pouring and she had other projects pouring. So it was, it was an incredible amount of work and lift for the engineering department. I deeply appreciate how much effort they put in to getting this closed before the weather turns south. Um, but yes, it has taken a village. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, budget supplemental. Okay. So, um, good evening. I, uh, we had talked about the new city hall um, at the last budget committee meeting and all the benefits that we um, feel that this new city hall would bring to the city. So it's consolidating uh, city staff. It would be an opportunity to bring citizens to one centralized location to make payments or if they have questions. Um, and it's also an opportunity for growth for the city. Um, so the, uh, the, the actual financial aspects of the new city hall um, is what I'm gonna go into detail more about tonight. Uh, so we are uh, looking to purchase the city hall for $6.5 million. Um, the, the plan is that it's a 27 month lease back period from the current owners and that's at $42,000 a month. Um, so uh, with that, we are looking at going for a full faith and credit debt obligation towards the purchase of the new city hall. Um, we are currently looking at between five and seven million, a maximum of seven million. Um, the reason why I'm giving you a range is because we are currently doing the due diligence. We are working with an architect um, and trying to get the, uh, the magnitude cost of what it would cost for tenant improvements. Um, so originally we had scheduled this budget committee meeting slightly earlier because we had uh, initially thought that we were gonna close earlier. However, that got pushed back until uh, February. So we will actually go out for the debt in January. Um, and actually that allowed us more time to get more detailed information on the architect and how much it's gonna cost. So. There, that's why there's a, a big range in there. Um, with that though, we are looking at um, an annual debt service cost of between 340,000 to $485,000 a year. 
And how we're gonna fund that is there's various ways besides just taking on the debt. Uh, we're also gonna take um, what we had originally proposed for this city hall renovations, that, that capital costs are gonna be moved over to the new city hall um, purchase fund. I'm actually, in part of this is actually creating a new city hall fund to create a transparency so you actually see all the ins and outs with the debt um, and uh, the capital costs coming in. So that'll be part of the supplemental. Uh, so with that, so the capital costs that were originally set for the city hall renovations will be moved over to, to the new building. Um, we are looking at also uh, selling the pond house um, within two years, we'll be selling the Burtman house, we are anticipating. Um, and then we're also looking at doing some transfers. So all the city funds play a key role in the new city hall and they're all benefiting from the new city hall. So all of the funds are also contributing over to the new city hall fund through transfers, which <coughs> I will bring that back as well. I was just wondering if if there are dollar amounts attached to those categories, like how much is in the yeah. renovation that's going for it. I, 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 my my offsetting is not working because I don't know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, this is something that we're still trying to determine as well as we're uh -huh. working through the architect. I mean, we've thought about maybe it could be around 500,000, could be less, could be more. That's that's the piece that we're For all the offsets or for? No, uh, this is for the? For the retrofitting. Retrofitting. Yeah. You're asking about what money are we oh. moving into the into the purchase? No, I want to, you, you know, it says retrofit city hall. How much is that? How much is going forward from that? Mm -hmm. How much is going? Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the estimate for the pond house? I'm just trying to get a sure. Uh, our goal is to sense. do you mind if I go into some of that? Yeah. So our goal is to get closer to 1.5 million dollars in offsets. Okay. Uh, we have uh, about it looks like 400 thousand dollars from this building that would be moved. We have another 450 thousand from the pond house or higher. Uh, we set a minimum threshold on that space. We have um, some some money that we had put in contingency for the library from the general fund in case we needed it. Uh, those dollars would be moving as well. We don't know that exact number yet. I won't until the we finish our checklist. Yeah, range is um, all I'm looking for. Yeah, uh -huh. so those are the types, of, uh, those are the main ones. The Burtman House could be another couple hundred thousand. So that's how we were getting between that one and $1.5 million range. We feel very safe at one million. We feel less unsure at 1.5 million. And that's why we're asking you to talk about this and give us your your general sign off to take a higher amount of debt if we can't get those other transfers. So can I can you clarify the 340,000 annual debt service mm -hmm. is if we borrow 5 million? Correct. And the 485 is if we borrow 7 million? Correct. Okay. So we're not going to She'll hate me for saying this. We're not going to borrow seven million dollars, uh, but we are just trying to make sure there's enough buffer that when we have to do the closing, that we've talked to all of you and we've been transparent that it could be that high, just on the off chance the pond house doesn't sell, and something hap some random emergency mm -hmm. happens. The highest amount we would pull is seven million dollars. Uh, the reality is we're probably closer to six or under, um, and we're actually Bonnie and I've been working to try and get us down to five. What are the maintenance costs on this building currently and what are we looking forward to? Well, part of what we, uh, we can get you those numbers before we close out. I don't think I have them today. The piece, I know I don't have them today. Uh, the piece that is also hard in that answer is that we don't know if this building is leaving right away. So right now I'm trying to make sure we have ongoing maintenance for both of them until this building is determined. We're starting that process will be before council at the third meeting in November to talk about that. So on November 19th, we'll start talking about how to manage this process. Um, but the energy use will be lower, but it's higher square footage. So the likelihood is that the energy cost will go up, but the percentage per square foot will be much lower mm -hmm. um, because it's over double the size of the building. You know, we're going from 11 up to 25. So there are definitely costs in there that we have to consider, um, but it's a newer building too, so the maintenance costs of the facility are, are less expensive. Newer HVAC system, newer roof membrane, 
stuff like that. I was just remembering a lot of deferred maintenance on this building that was going to come home to roost eventually, and that could be offset against four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars a year. And it will be at some point down the line. Yeah, if we if the building transfers or if we have a lease that covers those costs, then that's something we'll realize. Uh, it, it really is going to come down to council and the committee that you put together in order to make the determination for that. How do you plan to allocate the city hall fund across people who are using it? Um, through the transfers. So uh, it is based off of the number of employees um, is how we built it. I worked with the uh, the auditors um, to get some feedback from them. I also worked with other finance directors throughout um, locally just to kind of get a, a, a making sure that I'm actually, my uh, uh, my allocation is similar to what they would have done. So based off of the number of employees, um, that's the most equitable way to do it. Um, so uh, there's a lot of different ways you could have done it, but that is actually the most cleanest and the most efficient way to do it. Um, so the the one thing that I also wanted to, to make sure you all know about was the, the full faith and credit debt application. It is a different type of debt than um, similar to what the transportation bond in that it's a taxable um, full faith and credit uh, debt, um, which just means that the interest rate for us may be a little bit higher, but that actually gives us a little bit more leeway. And because we're leasing back the um, building, we had to take on a taxable debt. So the, the actual the interest rate, the spread between a taxable debt versus a non-exempt is actually pretty low. It's actually at a historic low right now. So, um, so we haven't, working with the financial advisor, we haven't um, looked at potentially refinancing because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. He actually recommended that we not. Right. So once we take out the debt, that we maintain the debt line where it is with the tax status, uh, just because it would cost more to refinance than it would in benefit for a lower interest rate. Exactly. And the only reason we have to be in the taxable category is because we're of the rent back? Yes. Otherwise we mm -hmm. could be in, interesting. Yeah, because okay. we're technically making money. Right. Or it's an income. Right. 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 So. Um, that's about the gist of the city hall um, supplemental. Um, there is a lot of moving parts. It will be coming back to city council in January. Um, because we are anticipating closing on the bond in February. Um, if there is anything that is significant that happens in between the time, I will definitely email you all and let you know, but I don't anticipate that, that, that there should be. Um, and if there's other questions too, Layla is um, very knowledgeable on the city hall as well, so. So we just nod and say this looks reasonable and then the council acts on it? And Unless you have concerns. If yeah. it's not reasonable, we'd like to know today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other questions or concerns from anyone on the committee? Are we planting a Christmas tree over there and trying to get it to grow? <laughs> We're talking contingency, right? <laughs> we did actually start that conversation about two weeks ago. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> We may be flipping how we do the tree lighting. Anyway, not for a couple of years. Please come to City Hall this year for the tree lighting. For a lot of years, the conversation has been to move the tree lighting to the big the on the waterfront. To the yeah, yeah. Bay Park. Oh, that's maybe this would love that. I would love that. I've oh, been trying to work on raising money for that. Yeah. <laughs> way more expensive. It's way cool. more expensive. Yeah. 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 Advocate for solar lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Just a couple of topics I want to kind of bring up. Uh, the last budget committee I attended in early August, uh, I'll uh, I'll plead ignorance to not knowing all the details of, of the uh, the position and funding. So I did mention that the stormwater uh, funds and the safe projects appear not to be funded, uh, but they are. Uh, 
for some reason, the funding goes in heavy this fiscal year. Where last fiscal year, 18-19, we only had 15,000, and that's why the Selwood project did not install water quality. Uh, but the budget actually has uh, fairly high amounts of money budgeted towards safe projects. A few are identified, and then there's a big pool of money that's not identified that can be allocated to whatever safe projects we find that we're having shortcomings on the, uh, the stormwater or we need additional stormwater funding. Uh, this year alone in the pot of money, we have 687,500 allocated. And in addition to that, there's also pots of money for McBroad, 43rd Avenue, uh, Howe, Covell, and uh, Linwood all have separate budgets. So there is a lot of money in there this fiscal year. I have no idea why there was almost none last year and 100 fold this year, but that's the way the budget was drawn up. So uh, we are gonna be tapping those uh, stormwater funds for the safe pro projects and do the stormwater quality uh, to meet our state MS4 permit. The other thing I wanna bring your attention to on Lake Road, uh, Lake Road was designed to be just a two inch uh, grind and overlay. That road is in, as we all know, uh, it's in horrible condition and on a structural rating basis, it doesn't rate high enough to maintain. It is in the total uh, failure mode and means a total full depth rebuild of that street. So I've redirected staff to look into the full depth rebuild of Lake Road uh, and that will take the cost up substantially, probably over three million now for Lake Road where I think we had just barely over a million budgeted before. Uh, and with that also, if we do the full thing and walk away, we also want to look at, can we add bike lanes to it, make it a complete street? To me, that's important, having the high school, middle school, elementary, all within 15 blocks of each other. It's important for me to have bike connectivity to get the kids safer to and from school and encourage more people to bike ride. Uh, so we're looking at that option, how much will that add to our cost and whether we can find the budget for that or not. Uh, without having this road budgeted at that high amount in the CIP, we are looking at other CI other counts to take and move over to this. Uh, the two most significant ones to be aware of, uh, King Road has a lot of questions and things that Kelly and I need to talk and discuss, so that's on hold right now. And we are considering sliding several hundred thousand dollars from the King Road CIP project to fund Lake Road. Uh, we're also uh, believe we have uh, a good amount of money invested in Linwood or like set aside for the Linwood Avenue project and we're looking to pull some of the stormwater out of Linwood and again put that into the Lake Road budget. So nothing's decided yet, nothing's final yet. We're in the very beginning parts of doing uh, survey work and then design will start after that and I'll have more information on which direction, which options we have and how much each option may cost at a future meeting. And just on the Linwood piece, to be clear, that's not taking away from the project. We ended up over budgeting the stormwater component. Mm -hmm. So it's simply taking it down to the actual cost of project is my understanding. Yes. So it doesn't change that project at all. We simply had more budget in that for that component <coughs> than we expected. So I'm not I'm a little surprised to hear that it was listed on the CIP as a two inch overlay because I can remember conversations as long as four years ago with the engineering director saying that the reason we were holding off on that street was because it was going to be a rebuild and they wanted to sort of milk out the last vestiges of usability out of the street before they did a rebuild, which was why they kept putting it off. So I'm surprised that it was budgeted as a two inch grind and I mean this, that's, that's clear back to Jason. I remember having that conversation with Jason and then again with Chuck. Well, uh, the going price for a rebuild for the, the uh, 2019 SSMP we have right now, uh, we have a close to a million dollar contract out to rebuild about 100,000 square feet of road. 
um, and using that those numbers on the lake and widening it with bike lanes and finishing it off and making it a full street. Uh, the early estimates right now we have, these are all really preliminary, we don't have any survey design work, but we're thinking it may run around three million. So. What's that work out to a block? Well, it's Wait. 21st to 37th roughly, so 16 blocks or almost 200,000 a block. Yeah, that's, that's pretty standard. And we used to, I mean, Chuck used to say that the rough calculation for a full street was $250,000 a block. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's not surprising. It's just, I'm, I guess I never really looked at the CIP and the amount of money because I just, I've known for four years that that was a full build out okay. on that street, so. Well, I mean, I think whatever it is, we really have to do it right because um, we built, I mean, you know, and you hear the the three million is gonna build this, and I think we spent four million to build what we built beyond the Lake Road project because it was federal dollars and there were lots of restrictions on how, you know, all the contracting and stuff. But um, I think it was four or, Just four or six million to build what was built beyond uh, Oatfield. And to me, like, I mean, we talk about, I mean, it's screaming for fixing, plus it's nexus to all the things you mentioned, the schools and the new Northwest Housing campus and everything else, but mainly to me it's, that, you know, we always talk about that last mile connection to get people to use transit and we don't have a safe place for people to bike who want to come to the MAC station. And so to me, it's number one priority, really. Agreed. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing about people having bicycle accidents with no cars around. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, that intersection is. at 34th, there have been a couple people I know who've had pretty bad accidents there with not involving a car. And I ride it couple times a day and I can attest to that. It's it's horrible. And, and on uh, Lakeland Road, one thing I, I did not mention that the current CIP, the five year CIP has identified a 10 million unfunded gap for Lake Road. But when I read that, I read it as being a full three lane construction from 23rd up to um, Guilford. And we're n currently not looking at the three lane construction up to uh, uh, east of Oatfield, but to, to verify that we do not need a full three lane, I will need to hire a transportation engineer and do some studies on left turns at 26th, 27th, 28th, and verify that we can, uh, that it'll work with a two lane section and, section and cars turning. There's not a lot of right of way there. If we went to three lane, we would have a lot of impacts to the homes that face that right now. I have heard from one citizen already saying, let me know if I need to sell my house or not. I don't want a sidewalk in front of my, my, my porch. Um, and so again, I need to look a little bit harder at that to see if, if two lane will be sufficient. And if so, we will look to build it with bike lanes and kind of complete it at this time and and walk away from it then for, for a while. I just had a question about <clears throat> I know that we start collecting um, vehicle road fees from the county beginning January 1st. Is there any hope that some of those funds might be used to close that gap a little bit? We're, we're quite optimistic and $430,000 has already been identified from the vehicle okay. registration fee to fund this street. Okay. And there's another 125,000 that we received from North Clackman Schools for Rao Middle School to in lieu of uh, construction. And I'm looking to pull that money over into this one too. Your tax dollars at work, people. <laughs> Doing good, seriously, this is good work that that money will be going to. Yeah. CIP update? That's all I have for right now. Those two projects are what Kelly and I thought were more most uh, up, up front. Uh, I am uh, rap uh, rapidly gaining knowledge of the CIP as I rewrite the, uh, the program for the next uh, budget and getting a better handle for where we're going. So I'll know more in future future meetings. So, so that was the CIP for this next year for this so lake is summer of 20? We, we hope to, yeah, get like, whether it will start and finish the summer of 20, I don't know if it'll be a one season job or a two season job, but we are looking uh, to have it go out to bid in springtime and under, under construction next summer. Cool. Let's do some questions. 
quarterly financials. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so Steve. this is our first quarter of our new fiscal year, June 30th, 2020. Um, so there are some highlights I'd like to point out in this quarterly report. Uh, the first thing is that these this report includes unaudited numbers. Um, we are currently in the middle of our audit. Uh, the uh, new auditors, which is Marina and company, will be out here in the, um, the week of November 11th for two weeks to do our field audit. Uh, and so we are right in the middle of the audit. So there's potential these numbers can change as we go through our, our close and so forth. Um, the other item I like to point out as you look through the entire report is that our LGIP interest reduced. Uh, last year we continually saw increases over the year, um, but now we are at uh, a reduction of two 2.45%, which is lower than the 2.75% that we have seen. Um, the state gas tax year-to-date revenues were at $83,217 year-to-date. So that's um, about what, what it was last first quarter of fiscal year 2019. So, How does that bear up with what we were told when the, that's the new gas tax, right? right? From the 2016 transportation bill. Do you know, I can't remember what we were told were the projections of what we would get? Yeah, no. offhand, I don't, I don't know, but I can go back and look and. Yeah, I'd be curious to know for that. how well the projections have been borne out. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So the other things I wanted to point out in this report is that the property taxes um, on page three, um, we did get numbers right before we were able to publish this. So the new assessed value uh, property taxes increased um, about 4%. Um, the real market values have also saw an increase of about 5%. Uh, so you see that there is that gap, it has continued to widen. Um, but these are these are numbers straight from the uh, Clackamas County. So, okay, I'm going to talk about the general fund. If you go to page six, quick, quick uh, point on the FTE. Oh, I just sure. want to be express my satisfaction that the engineering department's fully close to uh, or close to fully staffed. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Steve has done an excellent job. Kelly Brooks has done an excellent job, and they've hired some incredible people that we get to work with every day. And it's been a real pleasure. They are wonderful and smart and fierce and doing great work. Get more projects done, right? We <laughs> sure are. <laughs> and just to point it out to everybody, once again, looking at the difference between the real market value and assessed values, those are measures five and 50 at work. Mm -hmm. okay. And do in your mind what our budget would be were it not for that. Let's not say we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Saying, kind of depressing. Never, never stop advocating at the state level to fix that. Okay. Uh, moving on to general fund. Uh, so uh, the key item I wanted to point out was franchise fees. You'll see that we actually only earned $86 in the quarter. However, that is, um, it's a little bit misleading. We actually had $441,000 that we accrued back to fiscal year 2019 because it's revenue that we earned in 2019. So we had to move that back. It's consistent to what we've done in the past. Um, it's based off of general accounting principles. Um, so it, 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 it actually will, again, come back in the second quarter and you'll see an uptick in the third quarter. So, um, so that's why that number looks pretty low. Um, outside of the actual revenues, um, in the expense categories, there's some pretty big variances that I pointed out in the report. Uh, the first one is in community development, and that's mostly related to the Milwaukee Bay Park project, the capital outlay of $250,000 that's in there. Um, we had some vacancies as well, but um, the majority of that is the, the Milwaukee Bay Park. 
The, um, the next one is, um, you'll still see the engineering services had the vacancies, you'll still see a savings there. Um, facilities management is related to mostly the city hall. Um, all the renovations that we were gonna do for the city hall has now been put on hold because of the new city hall purchase. Um, IT and also non-departmental, I'm jumping ahead a bit. Um, there's just a timing difference. We pay a lot of maintenance contracts and we also pay the liability insurance upfront. And so that's why they're showing a, uh, um, an over budget, but they actually will, over time, over the course of the year, they'll spread out. Um, and then please. Question. Yeah, sure. I, I, um, I, I don't wanna waste everybody's time, but I have never worked with a biennial budget before, and I would appreciate a short explanation of what each of the columns actually consist oh, sure. of. Because when I was looking at some of these numbers, I couldn't figure out if a column was supposed to be one quarter only or, uh, and you know, I, I mean, I, I know something about budgeting, but I am at sea on this, how the biennial budget is, is structured. Uh, that would be helpful to me. Sure. That would be great. That's great. That's <laughs> there, are no <laughs> That's there are no bad questions on a budget committee. There are no bad questions. I mean, I figure everybody else here knows it, but I don't. <laughs> right. Structures are always good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so the first column is the amended biennial budget. So the, the budget's for two years. So this is the first, this, this column includes both the two years. It's amended because we had some supplementals and transfers throughout the biennial already. Um, the flexible budget column is what is expected for this quarter. So for example, um, uh, property taxes, we typically get um, the majority of the property taxes in November, so the flexible budget actually allocates for that. You said quarter, but you mean this year, right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, so the... the I, I um, believe it's the five quarter period. Yes, yeah. So this, oh. so... <laughs> so now wait a minute, we've had <laughs> three yeah. different definitions. No, so it would be your, where we are to date. So, so from the start the, of the budget, it would be it would be the full year that we just finished plus the first quarter. Correct. Right. So it's five quarters. Next time it will be six, six quarters, quarters. Right. Yes. and then seven. Okay, that's helpful. Ah, that's really helpful. Okay. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> is that correct? Yeah. Yes, it is correct. Where we so are year to date. That's what I thought it was. Right. Oh, okay. In the run of the Thank budget. You. It took me a while to figure uh, that out. Well, when I looked uh, at this before. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a little confusing. It gives you a better projection of where we should be at today versus right. just yeah, taking a right, straight right. I, I get that. I just didn't have the definition yeah. and I could not figure it out right. by myself. Uh, an audited um, fiscal year 2019 is the actuals that we're um, currently, they're what we have so far accounted for, obviously with the audit could change. Um, and then this year's actuals for the first quarter. And then the total biennium to date actuals is the combination of the two years. Um, it's the... So basically we, we would be comparing the second column and this column to get a sense of where we were. Yeah. The two gray columns, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so the two gray columns brings you to the over under flexible budget. Right. Um, and if you're looking at just like the first line, the property tax, that's why you see the 29,000. And at, at this level, we're at 100%. So we're at where we expected for property taxes. Um, so the expenditures are a little bit harder to identify a flexible budget, uh, but the concept is still there. So there's a lot of timing variances to account for. Does that help? Explain yes. That? Okay. Okay, um, if there's any, is there any other questions on general fund before I move on? Remind me again, Peg, is that the, um, that's the Willamette Falls, that's the mm -hmm. media? The okay. public education government huh? services, yeah. And we aren't using that? No, we're actually, um, we haven't used much of it and actually we are saving that as also part of the city hall fund. Uh -huh. So we're going yeah. to, it pays for things like putting in new cameras, mm -hmm. creating a new room for the camera crew to use in the new city hall. So we're expecting a significant expenditure. 
but it will be spent on that building, not this one. Correct. Got it. So it's going to carry for a couple of years because we're not going to have possession of that building for. We also expend these dollars on a variety of other projects. So we give money to um, teach students how to use this kind of equipment. Mm -hmm. We um, spend it on, mm -hmm. what else do we spend it on? Um, there's the elementary us. school. There's a, the uh, Clackamas Community College has some funding for it. And then the so, high school. Yeah. So it's all about education, otherwise connecting people into government through multimedia. So helping mm -hmm. them run a little uh, newscast at the elementary school, mm -hmm. that type of thing. No. Okay. Um, the debt service fund, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, this just allocates the, uh, res the receivable for the geo bond money that comes in um, and then we pay the debt. So for example, the library um, that goes into this fund, the, the tax dollars for the geo bond and then we just pay the debt service straight from it. And so new <coughs> debt for the city hall will be in this fund or you're saying because you're creating a separate fund, it'll be tracked separately from yeah, this? Yeah, it'll be in the new city hall fund. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next page is on building inspections fund. Uh, you'll see that building continues to have a very favorable increase in revenue. Um, the uh, offset of that is also the expenditure. So we did do the buy-in, or we did do a uh, supplemental um, last quarter to increase the materials and services. Um, what I've learned is that we are, that should still continue to be okay. Um, I'm working with our building official, Sam um, Vandegriff, and just watching that we are currently over budget, um, but we are watching that pretty closely. So we transferred 100,000 over um, last quarter from revenue into materials and services. Is there any questions on building? No. Uh, the library fund, um, the, uh, the fund is pretty much in line with what we had anticipated. Um, the capital outlay is where the, uh, new library um, uh, costs are going into. Um, we're at 80% of the project at this time. I know that it's almost done, but at this time we were at 80%, so you still see a small savings there, but I guarantee you it's all been spent. Um, yeah. So the fines are really down. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's good if it means that um, people don't owe the fines, but I don't think it's good if they're not being collected, so. Mm -hmm. So we actually, uh, we do a forgiveness program on the fines once a year, and we do it during the, I think right around Thanksgiving, uh, where year. you could bring out food uh, and make a contribution of food instead of money. We've been doing that program. Right, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, we it's actually do it twice, twice a year. It's yeah. once a year it's food, and once a year it's f f pay 50%, get 50%. <laughs> It's a 50% discount on yeah. the fine. Yeah, and I think that's what's coming up at Thanksgiving. I had, I specifically asked Katie because I have an amounting <laughs> file of fines. Oh. And here I just went out of the way to pay all of my fines before the, what, <laughs> before yeah. the break. We have had a significant increase in the number of people who have taken advantage of that program. Um, but in the next budget, we'll take that into consideration before we make assumptions. Isn't circulation also down? We also, yeah, it's not only circulation, but just general attendance at the library because it's it's more removed from mass transit um, and it's a smaller facility. So we always expected that we would have numbers down. Uh, like I said, we'll be opening January. So we're expecting those numbers to go back up. I'm having a hard time understanding the ending balance here for the library fund. So on your flexible budget, it was going to be $1.9 million in the hole. I don't know what that means when the fund has no money. Mm. But it looks like we have $2.2 million. I'm assuming most of the construction is done. Or what, what does all this mean down there? Are we doing better than we expected on the library? Or? Yeah, actually, according to this, it shows that we are actually um, at a deficit. However, 
Um, a lot of that is attributed to the capital outlay and timing. So um, we can take that back and dig into that a little bit more in depth, but um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's attributed a lot to timing of, of the library project. Do you, do you still have 2.2 .2 million in, in the bank there on the F, F, FY 2020 actual? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. the fund balance of 2.2, .2. Well, yeah. So you're not allowed to like run out of money, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, that's true. Yeah, no, there's plenty of money in the, in the bank for library. Gotcha. So yeah. wouldn't you say it's a matter of timing? Does that mean that there's going to be some sort of transfer between capital costs and, and operating costs? We've, I know we have some transfers that we mm -hmm. need to make sure have happened around different funds paid for different pieces, depending on if they were PARs. We had a... Uh, transfer for the water retention system, I believe at the, anyway, we have some fees that have not come out of some of our utility funds. Oh, utility right. funds were paying for those components because they were part of a broader system. Um, and so we just need mm -hmm. to go back and, and so check that those. will be adjusted out the next time we look at these Correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So after the library project is complete, we're doing a complete reconciliation of the entire, um, fund of the capital because just making sure that we're pulling all the funds correctly as they should be. Um, so there's going to be a reconciliation that happens once we're and done. And that will occur before the budget for the next biennium is done, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because since we move in in January, just we'll be trying to get up to speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I appreciate Fair it. Enough. Making yeah. sure that we do it is important. Any questions on the library or move on to transportation fund? Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, it's the transportation fund, there's not much really to go into depth. Um, I did, we did add in the obligated funds. Um, you'll see on page 13. So the total obligated funds with the expenditures today are at 89% of the budget, the flexible budget. Um, so in accordance with this and um, what we talked about earlier tonight, the the fund is pretty much in line with we we with what we expected. So, so like the local gas tax being so low is just because of the way the state disperses it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's always a two month lag within the governmental with mm -hmm. the state. And you can also see that on the next page, on page 13, when you look at um, your over, your comparison from first quarter of last year and first quarter of this year, it's always pretty low. Mm -hmm. So, so you, is the investment earnings not budgeted because you don't know or, I mean, I don't see any flexible budget for that. Right, there was no um, investment earnings budgeted. Uh, we actually closed on the transportation bond after the budget was completed. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I can't really speak to the previous finance director, but I believe that that she didn't actually budget all of the investment earnings because typically you don't always anticipate that you're going to get investment earnings. Um, but we have seen an anomaly this this last year how we've seen it increase consistently. Um, but yeah, there was no no budget, in the and that will that continue or not? Having no budget? Yeah. Um, actually, it's one of the my ticklers to look at to see <laughs> what we're going to do for the next budget. Yeah. So, and it really does depend on interest rates, too. I mean, anything can definitely happen in the next quarter or so. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on to water fund. <clears throat> um, this is a, about the same as um, the conversation with transportation fund. Uh, the total obligated, obligated funds and the expenditures to date were at 77% of the flexible budget. So it is typically lower um, in the first uh, portion of the fiscal year. So, um, I'm sorry, what's typically lower in the first portion of the fiscal year? 
The uh, total obligated funds and the expenditure. So mm -hmm. there's usually just from looking back at prior um, first quarters of the uh, the fiscal year, where it's usually at a lower. Um, it also might be because of the number of projects that we're working on right now in comparison to the yeah. previous year. And, and where is the 79 percent that you're talking about in the water fund? The 77 percent. So that's taking the total um, obligated funds of the 520 thousand. And plus what we've currently spent on the capital outlay and taken that against the total expenditures in the that, flexible that budget. Is that figure on this chart somewhere that I can look at? It's in the notes. I, in the, it's in it's the number notes. two. Okay. Yeah. I guess it's interesting to me that the, I mean, I would think both construction of new projects mm -hmm. and amount, so both expenditures and income would be higher this quarter than most of the year because this is when we're, this was the quarter when we did a lot of building and this is the quarter when, you know, until a month ago when people used a lot of water. So now they're paying the heavy water bills because they used a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that it's yeah. not, pan, doesn't pan out that way. Well, I can bring back um, in probably at the next budget committee meeting, I can definitely have Peter come back and explain in more depth again on the water fund. Um, this does take into account to the rate changes that we did, um, but uh, we can bring back more detail for you for sure. Make it a little less confusing. So. Um, the wastewater fund, uh, again, this is, um, we're currently at 90% of the flexible budget when it comes to the obligated funds. Um, there's not a whole lot to really go into detail here. We have some, some savings right now, materials and services, but that's a lot of timing because um, it is the first quarter. Um, so any questions on the wastewater fund? Usually the first quarter has a lot of, it's just there's not much to really talk about, so. <laughs> is, is there um, uh, ever a, a document or a study that would be like a little chart that says, these are the things that have timing issues and this is when it's low and this is when it's high? so that when we're looking at it, we could go, oh yeah, we know what that is, and mm -hmm. oh yeah, we don't know what this is. Um, I've never created never. a document like that. Okay. Yeah, I don't have one. That's not, not specifically, I mean, I know just generally going through this, but I don't have a document that I can present. So is that something that everybody would want? I'm. It would take me some time to create that. Uh, yeah, I would think so. But then <laughs> on the other hand, it, once it was done, it would be. Mm -hmm. I was just say, is it something that you could do in working on the new budget? Just oh. kind of keep. Bud budget assumptions. Keep, yeah, keep, yeah. Well, keep a tally of budget yeah. assumptions. And I mean, because mm -hmm. like insurance always gets paid once a year. That's a right. really clear one. But there are some other ones that don't seem so clear to me and, mm -hmm. because I don't know what's behind them. And, mm -hmm. um, and you yeah. guys do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as part of the budget process, um, I definitely, I mean, as I go through, this is my first year doing a budget, so as I go through the budget process, I'm definitely keeping tabs on key assumptions and making sure that I document things. So, um, yeah, so I, I can definitely bring that forward um, and add that to my, my list to make sure that it's in presentable fashion and <laughs> can give it to you. So, yeah, definitely. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one is the stormwater fund. Um, this one, this actually has that we're at total obligated funds and expenditures at 109 percent of the flexible budget. So um, we have a, a lot more projects in place um, in the stormwater fund. Um, and this will likely even out, but this is. Um, Again, there's, uh, besides that, there's not a whole lot to really talk about. We're in line with our revenue projections as we anticipated. Um, so. Any other questions on the stormwater fund? Well, um, I 
far as the CIP, where are we? And wasn't there some stall with the big stormwater projects? Meek. On Meek, yeah. Uh, we've been working with the railroad. I am. I have not asked for an update today. And with Steve gone, I can't answer that question. But I know that they've been in communication with the railroad in the last two weeks. Okay. So that is the delay. It's been <clears throat> making sure that we have the right of way necessary to do phase one. I believe we have all the right of way to do phase two. And is that a project that will have to wait? I mean, you can't do that in the winter time, so it's. Uh, I am. I'm not the right person to answer okay. that question. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Which project are you talking about? This is. Uh, it's a large stormwater project. It's where a large percentage of our stormwater dollars are going, and it's a pipe that would allow for an increased infrastructure for the central Milwaukee area. Where we're seeing a lot of development. And it has to go under a railroad track, is that what It's not under it, it's on the side of it. And so making sure that we have all the right placements for those, for the pipe, has been, for anyone who's worked with the railroad, <laughs> a little challenging. But it's uh, something staff's been working on for three or four years in order to get to this point. And um, I can ask Jen to have an update for you at the next budget meeting. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next section is the system development charges fund. Um, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of depth on the SCC funds, um, but I did have it, it's all broken out between transportation, water, um, and the wastewater and stormwater. Um, each one of the funds are um, in line with what we had anticipated. Um, we do have a few projects. Um, uh, in general, and so those were at 73% of the obligated funds and expenditures. Um, but if there's any questions on the STC fund, um, happy to mark those up. And then outside of that is the affordable housing fund and the uh, urban renewal um, fund, the Milwaukee Redevelop Redevelopment Commission. Um, those funds are uh, gaining some traction. Um, we definitely have seen some increase in the affordable housing fund um, and then also in the URA fund. So those um, in probably within this, this fiscal year, I'll probably get more in depth on, um, I haven't been showing you prior year, but I think as we are seeing now that we're getting quite a bit of an increase that we're gonna yeah. present that a little bit more in depth. Any idea when that money start to be spent? These funds are well. In the affordable housing one, it's potential that we could, you know, during the process of development of the lot across the street, that's that's a place where we could utilize that fund to be able to cause some affordable housing. Um, Those policies are being set right now by a subcommittee. Yeah, they're both that we just yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so we will be back in January with an update on what those policy recommendations were. Council had set some broad scope with the state uh, laws around what the funding could be spent on, but there are some additional policies that this group has wanted to look at, including things like diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we're just waiting for the final list of what those will be, and we'll bring it back to council. And then we'll be able to start looking at the expenditure. I was just kind of curious if it would show up in the next budget process. It will, absolutely. <laughs> That's all I have on the quarterly report. <clears throat> any, any other items? Good job. And a motion to adjourn. So moved. Wow. Wow. <laughs> to adjourn our budget committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.